Hello, everybody. I am Young Penitent, and welcome to my Icon Corner. Today, I have a guest that I'm very pleased to have with me, Father Michael Lilly, someone who I uh, discovered on the platform X, and we are continuing our series of interviews with uh, um, prominent uh, Orthodox accounts on X, and I really like his I really like following his account. I think he does a really good job. That's going to be part of what we're talking about today. And so thank you for joining us. Before we get started, please hit the like button. And if you're not already subscribed, subscribe to my channel because that is just what people do. And with that, I will add uh, Father Michael to the stage. Welcome. Welcome to the channel. Well, th thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be here with you. How are you doing today? Oh, it's good. Uh, I saw the uh, the solar eclipse with the family, so it was oh, quite exciting. Did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was pretty neat. You know, it came uh, here in Ohio. We were direct hit, so to speak. So we got a full. And at one, you know, as soon as they totally, uh, you know, covered the sun, it, you could see the the outline. It was something out of a movie, really. And yeah. then, you know, the darkness of the day at three o'clock in the afternoon. It was. It, it was pretty neat. It's something that you know really experienced. Yeah. You didn't so. have to. You didn't have to travel. Like you, it came right in your path. Yeah, 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 yeah. We we just just right up 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 the road here. So we we're, we're, are so yeah. you are fortunate. I tell you because I know I, because we had one come right through my town, my own town. Yeah. And uh, this was four years ago in 2020, and uh, my job they didn't. I didn't even have to travel. I was on the job, actually. My job wasn't giving people time off. So we just went outside when, you know, we went to, when it was happening. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the wind starts to blow and it starts to get dark. And so I think you are very fortunate for that. Can you tell us your impressions? It was almost a spiritual experience, in my personal opinion. Would you would you agree with that? Yeah, it was it was something. Yeah. I don't know how to describe it, but you know, you, you could definitely feel energy. You know, we were a lot of people around uh, us, you know, cause everyone gathered in different locations to see this thing. Uh, but that was with, I was with my wife and my children and we patiently waited, waited and, you know, at much, you didn't see much. And then as it got closer and closer, the, the moon, the covering, the, you know, you could feel the atmosphere changing, getting mm -hmm. a little cooler. Yep. And then, Soon as the moon covered the, the sun completely, actually opposite happened, what you just said. There was absolutely no wind. I mean, uh, right. it was almost like dead silence and uh, no air movement at all. So it almost like a vacuum happened. Okay. And, and, for, and it got colder, of course, because, you know, you're not getting any UV ray. Um, and it looked beautiful. So almost like... If you're looking into one of these uh, uh, these social media light rings <laughs> that, you know, and then. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. And then so you see just a, a little glimpse of the outside of the sun, mm -hmm. but in the center, just just the moon. And, um, you know, it's, I guess the next one's not for over another 20 years. So, you Is know, it? yeah, that's oh, what they no. say for a total for a total eclipse. So uh, it was something nice to experience with the family. You know, you, yeah. you know, we, we, it's. It's always nice to have memories to talk about. Hey, we did that. We saw that together. So yeah, the, uh, I consider you lucky. And you know, only uh, zero point zero one percent of all human beings are fortunate enough to see a total solar eclipse. Well, that's right. I, I think I talked to my as we were driving back. My, you know, I told my kids it could have been. I don't know about it, speculating here, but could have been what happened on the on the Lord's, uh, uh, you know, crucifixion. You know, at three p.m. This happened at. 315 our time uh where the total world went hmm. dark you know and it's, yeah i don't know what, what scientifically if they've looked that, that up but you can I imagine think, that this you know the eeriness of just the sun disappearing and it being dark you know right but um it would be a since so the lord's when when it got was dark when the lord was crucified it was for a number of hours though i think it was yeah. really it was a while they i, I don't know yeah this time. So, yeah. so I don't know. Maybe it was. I don't know. I don't know what happened exactly, but it, it, it was uh, him overcoming nature. That's for sure. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. OK, so I'm glad. Uh, wow. I'm, I'm uh, so glad you were able to see that. Um, so today we are going to be talking about the theme. Uh, the theme of the talk we chose. I chose today would be uh, use of social media. But before we get into that, 
I actually want my viewers to get to know you as a person, your background. Um, you know, we see you, you have a, a YouTube channel, you post uh, educational talks your, that you give to your parish, you post uh, your sermons, and you're active on Twitter, but you don't really talk about yourself much on these uh, on, on these posts. So can you tell us maybe your background? Um, so I, I guess I can I'll start for the present and, and work uh, work my way back a little bit. So sure. you know, presently I uh, I am a uh, I'm, I'm rector of the Nativity of Christ Church in Youngstown, Ohio, uh, and uh, that this church is uh, a um, patriarchal church. It's part of the, the the Moscow Patriarch. It's under the direct supervision of the Moscow Patriarch. There's about 30, 35 of these parishes in America uh, uh, today. Um, uh, I am on loan there, so to speak, technically, because uh, I am a, a clergyman of Archbishop Peter in Chicago under the Roe Corps. Oh, so, interesting. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, we're we're all one church, even though there's some kind of administrative differ differences right. there at time. But so uh, I've been serving here for eight years. Um, I've been uh, a priest going. Uh, it'll be shortly here. It'll be 11 years. And I, I went to seminary, St. Uh Seminary uh, in, in northeast Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in Arizona. Uh, that that is uh, what I consider my my home, my hometown. Uh, me and my wife were are from there. We we went to school together growing up in high school. Um, I graduated from the University of Arizona, so I, I lived in Arizona my whole life until I went to seminary. Oh, okay. And uh, in Arizona, I grew up as a Roman Catholic as a as a uh, as a youth as a child, and that's, right. that's how that was my formation uh, in faith. Um, we were certainly Catholic and, and we, we did, we did church and, but we weren't, I wouldn't say we were overly pious family, you know, right. but culturally sure. Catholic. And, uh, and so I, you know, I grew up knowing a bit about the faith, not maybe not the most informed, but, uh, but not ignorant either. Right. Uh, right. So, um, hmm. My faith, uh, talking about faith journey and stuff, but, uh, you know, I, I kind of fell away from faith altogether, almost uh, agnostic by the time I was in college it, it, when I went to university. I think it's a similar story to so many people, hmm. you know, um, for many. I, I just, you know, you, you, I think you, you're you distracted by the things of the world so much, uh, you know, and yeah. you kind of let the world do your thing, you know, influencing on, on the way you mm -hmm. think. and. Yeah. But, uh, you know, some years later, after, you know, after graduating college, getting married uh, to, to, to my wife, and we, we, we found our faith, and we went back uh, to the Catholic Church, um, and I had some difficulties with some, some of the theology there, so, and, and also some of the, just, it didn't see, the services sometimes were lacking, and, uh, and, how, and my, my, that's how my heart felt. And sure, sure. So, uh, we actually attended a, a local uh, Eastern Catholic church there for, for several years, and we found a home there. It was real nice. Uh, but at some point, you know, I wanted to, I, I truly believe that this Orthodox is Eastern Byzantine, right? This was, you know, and, the, and the, uh, they were always saying at this church that we are Orthodox, so you're supposed to live out your Orthodoxy. Um, but it, it felt like no one was living it out, really. They were just Catholics doing a Byzantine rite service. Okay. And, uh, I wanted to be Orthodox pretty bad. And my, my wife was, uh, you know, she was kind of hesitant at first. And, uh, but she said, you know, we might as well do it. You're going to make everyone miss you. You're going to make me miserable unless we do this. You know, so she begrudgingly came along with me. Uh, I think that's a story that I think a lot of married couples, especially men can, can relate to, uh, especially in my parish. I have many men that find the faith that, uh, that are married and one partner is just not ready for that yet. Right, right. So I've lived that, and um, but she, 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 she did uh, convert, and, and her heart followed as well, uh, uh, you know. And um, so we we joined in to the Russian Church. It was a real core church that um, that we we found uh, that fit for us spiritually. Uh, was that one of uh, what is Father? Um, who I think I interviewed someone. Uh, what, what was the priest? So uh, the church that who who received me uh, was uh, the Holy Archangels in Phoenix, Arizona. That was under Father John McEwen. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah. 
So now Phoenix, Arizona and Arizona in general, the, the Russian Orthodox Church outside of Russia is like, kind of like blossomed in, as of late. But when we were there, it, not so much. It was really uh, okay. it, was, it was not that that this is not the case. Uh, there's lots of missions and parishes there, it seems now. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm kind of disconnected from there. I haven't been back there since. Yeah. Um, Father Adam Peck has uh, he's planted like five or six parishes or a whole bunch, you know. Yeah. Like, Single handedly, almost, but I mean, with, you know, with his parishioners, but yeah, it's it's in, quite in the Arizona area. It's quite impressive, actually, with what's going on over there. It's uh, it's, it's quite amazing. But we found this this parish that you know just touched our hearts. You know, if they, they, the, the parishioners there were, uh, it was it was definitely uh, more ethnic, but they had converts, American converts. It was kind of a mix, but the, you you could tell they were very authentic in their faith and genuine, and it really touched our hearts. And so we. We made a home there um, until, you know, I felt this call to ministry. And that ministry was uh, in the chaplaincy in the military. Uh, so okay. with, the, with the blessing of our Archbishop Kirill uh, out there, I did go to uh, St. Tikhon's um, in order to get uh, my master's divinity in order to become a, a, a chaplain in the Air Force. Oh, OK, gotcha. Yeah. And so I did that. So in seminary, I, I was in the Air, uh, Air Force Reserves and, uh, and I, did, I have served in the uh, as a reserve chaplain. Uh, for 10 years. Okay. Um, and currently not drilling. I'm a, what they call a IRR. So inactive reserve, ready reserve. So I'm not drilling or okay, um, gotcha. kind of got a foot out, out the door yeah. from, um, for various reasons. It's a difficult life in, as a chaplain in the military. As of now, it's in, if you're a Christian in the military, it's, uh, quite difficult now, especially oh. if, you, if you're a traditional, have some whole traditional ideologies and such. Oh, okay. Yeah. In what ways? In... Well, I don't, I mean, I don't want to be overly political and that's what I do. I try not to do on my, uh, on my social media accounts though. It's inevitably you're going to because faith and, right. and, and morals and, and politics think, you know, they collide, but right, right, right. It, it, you know, the, the, I would just seem that, that there's uh there's definitely a, um, a, a large, chasm between the people that serve on the ground and then you know you're the upper ranks uh, that run in dc they have mm. they they're they're politicians and and, and they they run their right. organization and depending on who's in office it's going to change dramatically oh okay gotcha yeah. gotcha right all right so anyhow uh, um so i did that for a time so i i i've served but i also have served uh parish as a reservist i've served uh two churches i served in Outside how uh, outside St. Louis for a couple of years, and then here in in, in Youngstown since. Then. Okay, so you were a priest. You became a pr priest uh, before you got became a chaplain. Is that yes? I came a priest, and I was ordained in 2013. Uh, that that was my last year in, in seminary, and I was and I entered into the chaplaincy uh, okay, the year you. before that and did training. And to, I entered into the chaplaincy in 2012. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um. So I have a number of questions about this. Um, I'm not sure which one to go with first, but you mentioned uh, that you had, well, you didn't exactly, you. so you were convinced of, or, what was it that uh, convinced you of orthodoxy? Um, like, was there, was it, you, you mentioned theology. Was it the, I mean. There's, uh, there's a couple hangups I had in the Catholic church that uh, maybe, uh, maybe I wasn't, mature enough to understand it at the time but you know the uh thoughts on what and you'll see people kind of uh fight over this even in our own uh modern our discourses today about you know the ancestral sin original sin uh the uh, the, the primacy of the pope these things that i you know I've, when you study some of the church history church fathers it seems to be that there was a difference of opinion between east and west and okay uh, I was convinced that the, the that the Eastern Church was co more correct on uh, on on this. Okay, so maybe yeah. an, even an intellectual kind of uh, convert thing. Oh yes, it, yeah, most definitely. I was not connected like in a cultural way to the Catholic Church. You know, I know there's some people do. They are you know connected to the rites and rituals. You know, um, as somebody who was like I said, considered myself as a cultural Catholic, somebody who went to church, you know. I wouldn't even say every week, but, you know, monthly, uh, it wasn't, I didn't have that, that close of a connection to it. So I, 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 I was, I really was objective in my study of, of, of church history and, okay. and theology. Yeah. Sure. 
All right. Um, and another question I have, you, you mentioned that your you converted before your wife and she followed you. Now, yeah. um, maybe you can give us uh, some some pastoral advice for people who might find themselves in that kind of situation, because I've heard from people say this is pretty common. Someone yeah. will tell me, yeah, I really want to become Orthodox, but my wife, she'll she's right. told me she's going to leave me if I become Orthodox or yeah. something to that effect. And, you know, there's uh, I try to tell people, look, don't don't divorce your You know, if someone asked me, I said, don't get a divorce here if you can help sure. it. You know, you know, people maybe maybe the scriptural passage, you know, you have to love me more than your family and your parents and all this that might come up. And some people will say, you know, just, you know, go do it. What would you say in that tricky situation? What is your advice to people who find that themselves there? Well, it depends on the situation. Everyone's different. You know, some some people I know that they, they come to the church and their spouse is not particularly religious. You know, in those instances, I, I, I really don't think it's a, you. Maybe you have you can come to the church. You should come to the church and maybe even without your spouse. Now, if you are both religious, very active and, and you try now you have a that spirit is moving you in another direction. That's this is a little bit more difficult than uh, I, I can say be patient, you know. When I say my wife converted, you know, I she followed me. It was only because I waited. You know, I, I didn't, I didn't just. I, it took time. I allowed her time. You know, in my opinion, and it, uh, that women. I don't. I, I don't want to generalize, but in my experience, women have more of a conversion because of relationships, uh, and, and men tend to kind of see these things more uh, obje objectively, maybe. They'll, they'll they'll study themselves into the church or sure, theologically sure. like yeah, they're convinced you know it's a mental thing I, once they got yeah. it they got it and women yeah. it's not like that so much again I, I i'm generalizing here i'm sure there's exceptions to this but more it's a relational thing uh you know my wife didn't want to leave because she's made great relationships in her church that we were previously mm -hmm. in you know they, it's hard right. to cut that off and say i'm going to you know to start this again this whole, you know, and so gotcha. it took her time. And what is she, what I would say is she saw that she saw that I really, really believed it, that I was authentically, it wasn't like some passion that I, uh, that was uh, going to come and go, you know, we all tr start new things and maybe we don't. Right. Stick with it. Okay. I think she, she really, really saw that this was important uh, and that, uh, you know, I really believed it. And um, as she says, you're never going to be satisfied <laughs> unless we do this. And, and so, out of love, she 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 came, and I wouldn't I wouldn't say she did it begrudgingly, but she it wasn't that she was along she was on the same level as I was at, at first. Now she's right. all in, of course. She's my she's sure. my mother. She's my right hand. She I couldn't even do ministry without her. Hmm. Yeah, and I imagine the the relation she probably built relations at the new parish too. Uh, that probably was a oh, yeah. good reason. Yeah, you know, you right away, you get, you know, especially when we come in, you get a you get a sponsor, you get a, a godmother, somebody who guides her, helps her, you know, and, and yes, it, it, but again, but you you're asking her to now, in her views, leave friends, relationships, right, spiritual relationships. Right. You know, it's not just this this uh, theological exercise to them. Sure, sure, sure. And uh, so my last question before we move on to the topic is you, so you are a priest under a Rocor bishop serving a, a Moscow Patriarchate parish. So was that parish existing? How did that kind you of missed, trans You missed something, young penitent. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Rocor priest serving a Moscow Patriarchal parish that was educated at an OCA seminary. Oh, a whole nother. <laughs> another layer. <laughs> All this Russian, is, though. All Russian. All Russian uh, family there. But yes, yeah. yeah, so, but this could never have happened uh, 20 years ago. Oh, right? OK. It never could have happened 20 years ago. So God is so good. You know, even in the difficulties of our Orthodox Church, God, God, God is mending things. And so how does this work? Well, I went to the OCA seminary because at that time, uh, the Royal Course Seminary didn't offer a, a, a master's divinity. And, I, and it was just practically I needed that to become a chaplain. Okay. 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 Gotcha. Um, the uh, Moscow Patriarchal Churches in America are, are in, it, it, their their history is it's not difficult, but they were the, the pre revolutionary. So this church I served, it's founded in 1915. So pre revolutionary. It's an old church, and so they've they've always been under the Moscow Patriarch. And so when the uh, Mo Moscow offered the OC, you know, what is today the OCA, their autocephaly in 1970, many 
of these parishes decided they still wanted to stay under the guidance of the Moscow Patriarch. And so oh, gotcha. this is how you get these patriarchal parishes. There's now again, they, they've, they've dwindled because of closures and the, where they're located. They're about, I would say 35 of them. If I had it, I, I don't have the exact count, but about 35 of them left. Um, so they, in 1970, they stayed loyal to Moscow Patriarch. In 2007, when Moscow and Rokor uh, signed the Union of Recommunion, you know, now, now they're the same church. They're administered still differently, same church. It's hard, hard for a Moscow Patriarchal Church to get priests all the time. And so this okay. church was in need. Uh, I was in need, really. I, there, you know, with, uh, with where I was with my military service and uh, wanting to be a rector of a parish, they, they, they had a need. The bishop blessed on both ends in this. Okay. You know, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. So now we can uh, move on to our topic for today. Um, I have, uh, I will, I will say um, that. So uh, you have, you have quite a, a presence online. You, you have a YouTube channel. You have uh, a lot of followers on X. Uh, I think you use Facebook too. Um and so not a, not all priests will do this. This is kind of I feel like uh, some some priests maybe will maybe turn their nose up at using social media a little bit. Um, but you must be using it. You must be seeing um, some some fruits from doing this, I imagine. I mean, or, or else you wouldn't be doing it. Is that is that uh, is that fair to say? Yes, I've seen some fruits from it. And I've also I've shared in. The consequences of it as well. So it's 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 a very difficult, uh, uh, you know, technology to navigate. Right, right. Like yeah. you know, X. You know, it's we know that the people who run X are not not uh, they're not believers. I'll just you know say yeah. that. And on on X, like the 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 whole platform thr thrives on conflict and people throwing zinger, you know, zingers and yeah. disagreements and that kind of thing. And Somehow I have never, you know, I've been following you for a while and I've never seen you engage in any of this tit for tat or back and forth or disagreements or any of that. Somehow you seem to be, I don't, um, you, you seem to be above that somehow, but it, I, I think it's good to have a priest on X, like that presence um, to kind of, it's kind of like a calming, calming for the rest of the, you know, the rest of the people who are using it. People are going to be using it anyhow, right? Yeah. Um, yes. I, I don't know. Have you? I, I haven't seen you get in any. Has that happened? Have you ever gotten in into any conflicts? I've never seen that from you. I. I it's almost inevitable. It's going to happen. Is it? And, yeah. Yeah. I, I can say I'm not. You know. I'm. I'm not a. I'm not a. a, a you know, social media saint not at all. You know. I. There is okay. at times where you know, in the moments of weakness, you respond and. Or sure. you get into, you know, some. It, it's very easy. It's very easy for us to do this, and I, I have, I, I try to not to. So you, you're right. I, tr I try not. To. God knows, I try. It's, but it's, in, you know, we have temptations all the time. Right. Okay. Um, you know, you, especially when you post anything, you know how it's, it's almost like it's, everyone, someone's gonna either be offended or, or disagree, and you, right. you know, it, right. it, it's, and they all respond. It's. So how, you know, and we're all human. And so in that moment, are we going to be in the moment of weakness? Well, we respond in a certain way. Yes. I, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's, there's, there's plenty of posts I've, I've regretted putting out, um, but I, oh, okay. I, I do try hard. Uh, I try, try hard to use uh, social media as first and foremost, as a, a, a part to inspire people of, of faith. Okay. Okay, that's the primary reason. Um, you know, I got on X, Twitter X. Uh, I, I know I, I keep going back and forth. I sometimes I'll just say Twitter, but sure. uh, Elon, it's X. I know. Uh, it, it's the reason I got onto that. I was on Facebook more for family originally. You know, friends. You know, to, at a distance. And I don't. And I use Facebook less and less uh, for ministry because I have a, a church ministry page for our parish, and so okay. that'll be more for the ministry. So. Um, my, my, my use of Facebook, uh, per, for person uh, has kind of dwindled down a little bit. Um, but it's, I, you'll notice if you go onto my social media, especially on X, I'll, I'll do like for daily, like something, I try to do a meme or a post or, or some kind of scripture or something, something 
it's like a, you start your day with prayer. I start something to, you know, be uh, inspirational, to live, uplift people or give them some food for thought, uh, a quote from a saint, something, you know, mm -hmm. that that way, you know, you, we're, you know, we're, we're, as St. Paul says, we're, we're sanctifying the time. We're sanctifying this space of social media, sure. you sure. know, the best sure. we can. Um, what the rest of the day brings, uh, you know, on there, on those, on these platforms. I don't know when you're busy, sometimes you don't, I like, I find that when I have a busy day, it's kind of better because I don't check these things so much, but oh, when, you, okay. when you get idle, like the, the devil comes in, this is where you, I think the temptations come because you're on there probably way too much. Right, right, right. It does then, suck some time. Yeah. But there's, there's good things about it too. I mean, I don't know, maybe even just you know, people share articles, yeah. news, that's kind of. The truth of the matter is, is like when I get people coming to our church, and I know this is true of every parish who are interested in the faith, they, they're, they've already know way more than most, even maybe people who grew up in the church because of the internet, because of social media, they've, they've done their research. They will go and ask strangers online about the Orthodox church before they ask a, a you know, somebody who's educated, in serving in ministry, that's just the truth of the matter. So why not be there? Um, and right. It's scary to, to be honest with you. Some, some of the responses people get when you know they're posting, and so this is. I, I was just mentioning to somebody else I was big online uh, in the Orthodox Church that you know I've less and less you know my YouTube account. I've, I I use it to educate. I first I started so I could educate my parish. Uh, in, in ways that sometimes it's hard to get people, especially during the week, to church. It, we are a commuter church. People drive up to an hour to get to church. Or how can I reach them? So I use YouTube to do this, to make videos. Um, and that, of course, is open up to the world so everyone can see these things. Um, but I, I have to inform. So I have to teach. You know, there's a, a coach that says if you're... Um, there's a coach, Dick Tomey, where I went to University of Arizona. He was a longtime coach. Some of you may know this, the area of the Desert Swarm area. But he would he would say that you know, as a, as a coach, uh, you're either when your 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 players are doing something that you don't uh, that you don't agree with, you're either uh, allowing it or coaching it. Hmm. And it that 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 resonates with me as a priest that so there's when people are living a life or doing believing things or saying things online or i'm either allowing them to do that i, I mean sure. or i'm telling i'm teaching them that so right. i want to make sure you know that i'm actively teaching properly and that i'm not okay. condoning that poor behavior and so you got to be online cuz it's where they're at it is the town hall as elon says it it really is yeah. unfortunately yeah. yeah but uh okay so how like if people are going to be using this do you have advice to people for for maybe you know what what is your approach to creating a post and how would you advise other people when they're posting and creating content online like um so it's going to be different what you're using it for for ministry purposes for uh, i know i might have some controversial takes on this one i i'm not a big and i've taken heat about this i uh i don't Especially if you're clergy, an anonymity is not good. Okay. All right. And I know that I've taken heat because I know people, I know in the climate of cancel culture, you can say, you can put a post one thing and, 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 and your employer sees it. Right. It's difficult. Right. I get it. I, I mean, I'm by vocational. I didn't sell you. I mean, I have another job outside. I have to, to support family. You know, oh, I, yeah. I work another job and I know it's difficult. But anonymity also allows you to put your guard down. And this is the, comes to the point. If you can't say it to somebody, if you, if I couldn't say it to you face to face, I probably shouldn't have put it online. Okay. Yeah. We, we have, we put these, these, in, these, uh, uh, these layers between people, like as if there's no consequences. Right. Right. You know? And so th th this for posting, I said, well, post it like you, like they know who is saying it. If you're, if you're anonymous, at least. You got to in your mind say, OK, at least they, they know it's me. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, I, I'm not anonymous. That's why I always I've never been anonymous. I want people because I'm one. It's for my ministry and I want people to know who I am. And I I want to be accountable for my words. Sure. sure. And I want to be able to say if I put something out there, I, I would say the same thing to somebody if they were face to face with me. OK. 
you know, because th there's consequences sometimes to just saying things flippantly and, and thinking that it's not, eh, it doesn't matter. Um, so for that, that's for content. And content, you know, other than the content creation, uh, I would just say be uplifting. If it's for ministry, don't, don't be, it's not, we, we should not be tearing people down. I, I know that um, sometimes we like to d go and feel like we're all St. Mark of Ephesus and, right, and right. defend the church. Uh, from heresies and schismatics, which there are plenty uh, uh, out there, but uh, we also, you know, for every person we bring into the church by being strong and bold in our faith, we there might be people who misunderstand us and don't get it, and and okay. and, and may, we may be a barrier to them, yeah. and so we have to mm -hmm. tread the royal path of, of down the road. It's hard not to go right and left, not. We have to be kind of balanced in these things. Um, like just recently on, on X, I, I post a, a quote from uh, St. Maria of Paris that says that if she, she's just a small quote, it says Christianity is, is either fire or it's nothing. Resonates in my heart. You know, I post that and then I get somebody who replies that says, we cannot trust her. She's a modernist. Okay. So, wow. so here, uh, too liberal. This post is too liberal. On the okay. other end, we have people who defend uh, homosexuality and sodomy. And you bring up a post about Sodom and Gomorrah, and then you're uh, like some white, right wing, crazy nut job priest. Hmm. You know? So if you are on the royal path, you're going to get attacked for both ends. Okay. Gotcha. And if you're doing that, you know, you're, 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 you're right where you're supposed to be. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to yeah. get, you're going to get hit. You're not going to be able to please everybody. Mm mm. And that's okay because that's 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 what the Lord said that you need to be. So I had uh, I actually had a guest on who had a very controversial take on uh, some church matters, um, and like recently actually, and you know I was like wondering, man, should I take this? down? I almost like thought, should I take this down? Like, you know, people were, I kind of had to. Uh, it was. I've had I've had a few bumps, you know, on the, along the road, uh, controversial things online. You know, you're gonna make mistakes. Even even you might you might have said said something right. You might even or you might say something wrong. You know. Mm -hmm. um, so. well, well, we're all gonna misspeak. You know, if if anyone has listened to my sermons, which I post, you know, online, and not because I think I'm the greatest homilist, but because I got parishioners that are homebound you know they they like to hear some connection to their we don't we don't live stream our our, our services but they they want to be connected they want to get the message and then but they reach to a greater audience you know i have lots of people that have reached out and they, they're very appreciative of the sermons that they've uh, been edifying to them but i listen every now and then to my sermons i don't like to do it but i do it not because i need to some to, to pat myself on the back but because it, it helps me improve my homilies and and see where I I I I see where I'm you know not so crisp in, in my delivery but and there I notice I make small mistakes all the time uh oh I I said this passage was from Matthew when it was actually from Mark or you know okay. you know it happens all the time it's gonna you know I don't think we need to stress about these things but if we make grave errors we we should be humbled enough to uh maybe say that we it was an error I, I correct this all right if yeah, it's I somebody do. you've had on your po on your podcast, that's not your words; that's theirs. Right, right. right. It's not that you, uh, uh, you, you, you're promote, you're promoting what they say. You're just giving them a platform to speak. And right, right, right. But you know, I my my thought was, you know, people are going to hear these ideas. It's not like we shouldn't say an idea. They're out there. Maybe you should hear the idea and engage it and figure out, was it right? Was it wrong? Think about it, talk about it, you know, mm -hmm. which I did on my subsequent stream. So I did a little, um, you know, I did a little bit what you're talking about. So yeah. um, one point I want to make is, so you were saying people will come and, you know, ex people have no shame. Like they will, they will even try to correct a priest, for example. So I want to make a point. My own, this is my own point is, uh, for people who are using X, it's not I I do not think it's appropriate to be correcting a priest if you're, uh, you know. 
you know, this is like what it says in the scripture, you don't, you don't, uh, you don't rebuke an elder, right? So you got to be very careful when you're uh, responding. If there is a priest who is condescending to our lowliness, he's coming in, he's joining us on X, he's, you know, having a presence of a, a you know, a cleric. So uh, that was, I just want to make that point. Do you have anything to say about that? When I, when I came into the church uh, and I was, I was fearful of the priest, not in a sense that, it, you know, I, I was scared of them, but, you know, I, the awe and reverence that I had for the priest, you know, we, we go up to them and receive their blessing. And, uh, right. and I, I had a great respect for the office and for uh, what they did as for, you know, for offering us the mysteries of the Lord. Uh, being that that medium which God works through, and um, and so it seems like though at times online that either people that never picked up on that uh, that 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 awesomeness of the priesthood, right, or they allowed electronics to ruin it completely. Like I, I it, like I, I I could I would be afraid to do anything without a blessing from my priest at the, some time. Maybe that's just the way they taught me, or. Um, but I don't see that anymore. People passively say, I got a blessing. You know, I don't know what that means anymore. What it mean? What does a blessing mean? I don't know. Uh, mm. That's a very controversial thing, to, depending on who you ask. Uh, is it a blessing from four pastors uh, back? You know, I'm at, you know, five cities down and I, I have a blessing to do this, you know. From oh, to do a post online or, or something. Or do anything. Yeah. You know, I, I, can't, I wouldn't even, I, you know, you can't even go into the altar without a blessing. You can't read the right. epistle without a blessing. Here we have people teaching the the mysteries of, of our Orthodox faith online, throwing pearls to swine every day, you know, uh, online. Uh, so, yeah, I, 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 I feel you on this. Um, that with that said, I know there there are probably priests that I disagree with. Uh, I know there's priests that maybe have a, um, a view of the church they would like to change, you know, uh, and they're they're online, too. They have a voice online, too. And so how do we engage them? Do we I don't. It, that is not an easy thing to do. I um, that's why I have my presence because my I can counteract that by offering something else. But I don't have mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. go in a tirade and and, and online uh, and it, and this takes time. You know, it takes maturity. Again, in the infancy of social media, like I said, I've I've made my mistakes online. You know, we're all, we're all weak uh, and we all fall for temptations very easily. Um. All right. Uh, how about we have a, have a few uh, personal questions about Father Michael? Um, do you have? Can you tell us? Do you have a? Do you have a hobby? So yeah, I'm a. Uh, I do. Uh, so I, I work out. You know, at least four to five times a week. You know, uh, lift weights. Uh, uh, just sharing that. You know, I've there's just some uh, injuries and stuff. I'm doing a lot more calisthenic work, which is. Uh, been humbling, but also very fun, uh, and, and, uh, and learning how to a new way of you know uh, keeping in shape and exercising. But uh, my hobby, I, I was a, a wrestler uh, while I was younger, and then I got into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Uh, been on and off for a couple decades, but seriously for ten years. And um, so I've coached wrestling, youth wrestling for my sons. I uh, I do Jiu Jitsu a couple times a week. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, it's a way to stay in shape, do something that I've, I've, I've enjoyed since I was young, the grappling arts and, um, and, and, uh, some, you know, a good hobby is a good outlet to sometimes, you know, we, we, we have a lot of family, uh, obligations, uh, a lot of pastoral obligations, first and primary as a priest. It's nice to have something that even for a short amount of time, even if it's for an, uh, a couple hours a week to, to not think about, you know, we, we, right, we, we right. need that outlet sometimes. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Um, what does a day in the life of father Michael look like? <laughs> uh, so I get, we get up, I work out me and my wife, we have a home gym, so we work out together. It's a great time. This is our time together. So we, we do our exercising together. Um, and then I go, I go off to work. So I, I work at a, uh, a career tech, a vocational career tech school and I, as a financial aid um, counselor there. Oh, okay. Okay. So I, I work Monday through Friday. Um, uh, come home and then we are off to the races with kids uh, as they do there. I have five children. So um, 
I've got three teenagers and two, uh, two, uh, younger ones. Oh, and okay. so between me and the wife, we're sh- chauffeuring, getting them to do their activities. Uh, my wife homeschools. So there's a, you know, we help, I help out where I can there, uh, when I get home, um, services on the weekend, the weekends are all for church. It's always church, okay. always church. And then whatever falls on the weekdays we, we do, I, um, I wish I could say I'm, well, there's some of these priests that serve every day. And uh, man, maybe one day I can be there. Maybe one day I don't have to work. Um, and, and maybe we'll have an inertia in my parish that would like to support that. But for now, I'm not. But we, if there's a great feast day, if there's uh, extra services, we do them. Uh, we're, we're, that always comes first in my family. My kids know it. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing to see your children want to do it. And they do. Sure. They all serve the church. My my uh, my daughter sing. My boys serve. My I have a second daughter that's great at iconography. She's a great artist. Uh, they, they've all just everything for the church. Um, and and so I thank God for that. And so the weekends are always pat for pastoral things. And sometimes you know people call for confession counseling throughout the week. So I get to do sick calls. So I'm always I'm always just on the uh, on the go, but uh, you know flexible uh, in the evenings. But there's a lot going on. Do you uh, do you read? Do you like to read outside of spiritual books? Do you do you have a particular genre or interest? No, <laughs> no. I, I wish I, I wish I could say otherwise. I am. Uh, I read so much uh, coming into Orthodoxy and then at seminary. You know, we consumed so much material as you needed to, um, and then you, I would read. I read a ton of the the both. You know, the spiritual books. And I just lost a passion for reading and consuming mm. a lot of this stuff, you know, and take it in. And the, the only thing that I like to read is commentaries on scripture. Is that what you read? Yes. Uh, and so I, I, you know, cause I'm preparing for sermons and, and it's okay. a necessity, but I, I, I find enjoyment in that. I, to learn a little bit more about uh, the scriptures uh, and, and delve deeper and deeper into those that, 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 that is something I do enjoy doing. Uh, but I cannot, I just cannot read to read anymore. Um, really? Maybe yeah. that my wife devours books. Yeah. She devours them. I mean, she, she's, she, she's a good influence for my kids. Uh, I, I, I don't, I'm not a good influence in that, in that manner. You know, I, I kind of feel the same way. Like my, yeah. my reading is almost exclusively uh, spiritual anymore. Um, yeah. So what which commentaries are you reading? Like I have here on my bookshelf, this is Blessed Theophilact. I haven't actually read through the whole thing, but what which ones do you have, or what you, which what do you like to read? So through? I I have the Theophilact. I, I read the prologue. I see you have a prologue there, so that that's part of my you know I I do read the prologue quite a bit. Um, okay. Yeah, and then uh, I, I read the commentaries Saint John Chrysostom, um, and then I've got some footnotes. Uh, uh, you know, I've got some apps online too that have uh so the ancient uh it's actually a protestant commentary book the uh, ancient christian uh ancient it's ancient it was put out by Protestant. i forget which one but they have a, a you know if you go to it you can look up a, a scripture e-sword is a good app by the way i don't know if anyone knows it e-sword sword sword yeah s-w-o-r-d uh oh. th- that's a, a beautiful app that you can actually Download all the different Bible translations. Uh, you can get them in Greek, Hebrew, uh, all, Russian, any, any, uh, and, and all the English translations. And there you can actually buy this ancient Christian commentaries um, uh, uh, as a add-on to this app. And so you just go to your scripture, the passage you maybe want to look at, and all it'll right. have all the church fathers laid out on the scripture. So I, I use that quite a bit. Yeah, because it's I all like- condensed in there. I do like the Catena Catena Bible commentary. Is that a similar? Artina, yeah, yeah, the Golden Chain. It's a, a, a the Catena Artina, yeah. I think uh, that I think initially uh, Saint um, Aquinas actually put that together. The, yeah. uh, or not or not a Saint, but a, a Thomas Aquinas. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Uh, do you recommend a book for us today? <laughs> um. You know, all the books that I read, I go back and if I'm going to read a book, I, I don't go to new books. Generally, I go back to old books. And so 
Uh, some of the books that have been so mo most meaningful to me uh, that I go back to a lot is uh, the, uh, Far the Father Arseni, The Cloud of Witnesses. Uh, if you have not read that, I, I highly recommend it. Um, yeah. I've probably read, read it at least 12 times. Wow. Uh, it's it was impactful for me coming into the church and being in the church. It's about have you heard of this? You can get it through St. Vladimir's Press. It's about a higher monk during the Soviet times. Uh, there's a two book series. The first part is about him being a prisoner in the gulags. And the uh, second part, which I would recommend, the second book is uh, Cloud of Witnesses, which is his he's living his life with his spiritual children kind of like under secretly as a as a higher monk. Uh, and, and it's all the remembrances and miracles that all his spiritual children had of this father or Oh, uh, okay. Gotcha. You know, it's a very, uh, very impactful book. I, I recommend that way of the pilgrim. If you're going to pick up an old book, um, uh, the, uh, the arena by St. Ignatius Bryachanov. Uh, that's, that's, that's a really good book to, especially reading during Lent. Uh, right. I, put, you know, I hate to put it on par with St. John of the ladder, but it, it's of that mold, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm reading that this year. That's my my Lenten reading. Oh, well, well good. Good. Yeah. Um okay, good. Uh so I want also want to bring up your pull up your website, your your Orthodox apparel. Uh <laughs> I'm going to show this to people. Um let me add this to the, to the stage here. Hey, you, you you can pick up some great things like this mug and and this Is that what you got? Yeah, you got you can get a vest here. This one's dedicated to the uh to the uh the Brotherhood of the Holy Sepulcher, which I, I went on pilgrimage to Holy Land last year. It was very impactful for me. And uh so uh the, the, you can you'll, you'll what see is the this. what is the Brotherhood of the Holy Sepulcher? These are this is a group in uh in the Holy Land that uh they support, protect, and uh and um and organize the the all the holy uh places in uh, in the holy land so the first uh -huh. and foremost the sepulcher the holy sepulcher but also the the other holy sites throughout throughout uh israel and the holy land um they they are the gate they're the two this one this it means the tomb keepers and in, in, is, in is, is that the same one that's here yeah is that this? yeah that that one's a little same vest but different design there yeah oh okay yeah so did did you put this all together is this your your web yeah store? it's all mine yeah, that's my store. And you had these uh, all these different products uh, created, or yeah, you sort them? I designed them, and yeah, I have a, I have a, a third party that that that'll print that prints them. Oh, look at the there's a cross and barbell. I gotta yeah. get that. Yeah, I should get that. Some of these are controversial. I had a priest not like that. I had I imagine. A, yeah. yeah, you imagine, and then there is this cross and the flag, which I, I, I there is a, a, I guess a very, uh, somebody with a hyphen in their last name that then it, uh, some woman that called me some, uh, this one, na Christian nationalist of some sort because I, oh, uh, okay, America, yeah. Orthodox America hoodie. Let's yeah. make America Orthodox again, or mm. make America Orthodox. I like it. Yeah um they're playful some of these are playful and spin-offs that you know obviously but uh you know um but they, yeah they, some people do like getting these to, to you know to uh, have kind of represent their orthodox faith uh, as they're with their uh, out in public oh this is the one you're wearing yes this is what i'm wearing right now yeah okay so well you know you can you can criticize it if you want i guess but you know you don't have to wear it i mean right. You could, I mean, I would just, you know, if someone wants to wear it, then I'd say just let them wear it. That's first, you know, my personal right. opinion on that. Um, Everything, as you know, since you're on X and and, and social media, is uh, it's uh, someone's going to be offended and someone's going to sure. have to make a point. And um, it's it's sad because when we're in real life, this is not we don't get upset about these things. You know, it, it, it's just not the case. I never right. we never have issues in our parishes because no. it's only online. Yeah. It's, so it is can be a very toxic, and this is probably why a lot of priests, as you said in the beginning of our talk, that may avoid the social media because it is a temptation. Uh, it, it can lead to maybe uh, you saying something that you, you know out of out of maybe a, a weak sure. moment, and and uh, you know, and now you you've you've scandalized somebody that you didn't intend to scandalize, and so it's difficult, but. Oh. But we need so to be we, there. Some of these priests, we need to be there yeah. to help. 
Yeah. Yeah, we need. I think we need a clergy pre presence on X and online in general. You know. It's, yeah. Um, like I said, you're you're condescending to our lowliness because you know X can be kind of a um, kind of a gutter. It's sort of a lot of yeah. It's a lot of you negativity. See, you see all the worst of the world all all sure. right on your feed every day. And so it can kind of shape you to think that, but God is good. Uh, the church is salvific. You know, we have people that are repenting and trying their best to enter into the kingdom of heaven that we, we miss that. And so we got to be, you know, had to be more vocal about that, that positive message uh, of the gospel uh, online. Unashamedly, unashamedly, as the gospel from this past Sunday said. Okay, and um, so these, I have uh, below in the description, there are links to Father Michael's YouTube channel where you can watch his homilies and talks that he gives, his educational talks, his uh, catechetical, kind of a catechesis kind of things. Uh, he's got his Orthodox apparel, his ex, all of these, uh, and they're all links below. Uh, so people can go and check those out, go subscribe to his YouTube channel. My uh, last question which is a question I give to clergy when they come on is leave us. Can you leave us with a word of advice or a word to live by, as they say? Um, st stay faithful. That's all God is uh, looking for us as uh, Orthodox Christians. You know, we, we, he knows that we're sinners. We know we're sinners. He knows our hearts. Uh, none of us is, uh, are free from impurities. We're defiled people. And God understands that too, but He what He wants for us is just to do the best we can to be faithful, keep journeying to God. I uh, know that the the Orthodox Church is the boat that will save you, but you got to stay in the boat and you do your part, and God will do His. Wonderful. Thank you, Father, for joining us. This has been uh, Young Penitent, and we'll catch you all on the next one. Good night, everybody. God bless.